All right, one more example with geometric vectors to illustrate one more important point. Actually, this discussion will remain a little bit open and will leave you with something to think about. Once again, let our goal be to decompose E as a linear combination of A, B, C, and D in all possible ways, and to capture all of those possible linear combinations with a single mathematical expression. And once again, the dependency, the linear dependency among the vectors A, B, and C is the key to achieving this goal. So let's do the easy part. Of course, E is 2A plus, and now we have to come up with the non-trivial linear combinations that yield zero. And they come from the following observations. The first one is that B is a sum of A and C. That's certainly true. So B is the sum of A and C. That's correct. The vectors A, B, C, and D are linearly dependent. Here is one proof of it. So that means that, let's put it in alphabetical order. A minus B plus C is zero, and it's a non-trivial zero. So we do plus alpha A plus, excuse me, A minus B plus C. Great. So we observed one relationship among the vectors A, B, C, and D, and that led to this term, this non-trivial zero. That doesn't change the fact that the linear combination evaluates to E, but does deliver all sorts of different linear combinations because it equals 2 plus alpha minus alpha B, alpha B plus alpha C. So different values of alpha result in different linear combinations. But that's not all. There's an entirely different relationship among the vectors A, B, C, and D. And the one that I notice is that D is C minus A. It's not a perfect drawing, but that's what I meant. So D is C minus A. Once again, practice subtracting geometric vectors. C is D, excuse me, D is C minus A. And, that, and that's an entirely new linear combination. And therefore, it leads to an additional term with a new degree of freedom beta here. And in alphabetical order, it reads minus A plus C minus D. Okay, is there another one? Is there another way in which vectors A, B, C, and D are linearly dependent? Well, perhaps there is. Perhaps you might say that C is the average of D and B. D plus B over 2. Let's write that down. C equals 1 half B plus 1 half D. Okay? So that would mean that another term should go here and in alphabetical order, 1 half B minus C plus 1 half D. Okay, well, actually, that's one too many. And I'll just point out why it's one too many. I'll leave some of the details out and uh, we'll come back to this discussion a little bit later on when we'll know exactly when to stop. Well, here's why, here's a little bit of indication of why we should have stopped here. And that is because this linear combination is not new. It is not independent from these two. Let me explain what I mean by independent. If we observe that B equals A plus C, from this you can in no way conclude that D equals C minus A. That's a new piece of information. This relationship right here is something that's true about these vectors that's not captured by this expression. So that's a new, quote unquote, new linear combination and a new term in the decomposition. Now, but now if somebody tells you this relationship and this relationship, then from these two, you can derive this relationship. So it's no longer new with respect to these two relationships. Uh, how do we do this? 
So actually it's relatively straightforward. You just add them together. The A's will cancel and we'll have 2C equals B plus D. So if somebody gives you this piece of information as well as this piece of information, then you can deduce this piece of information. 2C equals B plus D, so C equals 1 half B plus 1 half D. So this isn't new. And therefore, there's no need to add it to this expression. Now, is it a mistake to add it to this expression? And there are different ways of looking at it, but in my book, it is a little bit of a mistake. Because I think what you want of this expression is to not only capture all possible linear combinations that produce E, but you want this expression capture it uniquely so that for any value, for any combination of values of the degrees of freedom, there would only be one linear combination. And if we add this term, then a certain linear combination can be obtained in more than one way. Let's see if we can pull it off. Let's pick alpha equals one and beta equals one. Then we have 2a, the a's cancel, minus b plus 2c minus d. So that's what we have. E equals 2a, 2a minus b plus 2c minus b plus 2c minus d. That's when we took a alpha equals 1 and beta equals 1. Now, let me see if we can get this very same combination of coefficients, but by picking different values for the degrees of freedom. And what I'm going to do is take 2, I'm guessing minus 2, gamma will be minus 2. So alpha equals 0, beta equals 0, and gamma equals minus 2. And you will observe that we'll get the exact same linear combination. So you can obtain this linear combination from this expression by finding two different, and you will actually learn that there are four infinitely many different combinations of parameters. So it's not as good as it would have been had we left it with these two terms. So I think that that's actually one too many. So a good question that should arise in your minds is, well, how do I know when to stop? Once I found two, how do I know that that's all there is? Well, we will actually answer this question rather soon, and then we'll come back to this problem, and we'll explain why we should have stopped, why stopping here was the right thing to do. But for now, you can think about this question. How do you determine when to stop? How do you determine just how many independent pieces of information as far as the relationships among these vectors there are and how to determine how many of those relationships there are.